part four, the Game Master podcast series. In these vlogs, I'm focusing on, if you're coming to this podcast through YouTube search or maybe one of my blogs, the aim of these podcasts is to help you as a game master, to help you find that narrative, forge that narrative, take your player personality, take your creativity, take what you're good at, leverage that on the table so this way, for those brief few hours, together, we can step out of space and time and create a really interesting narrative in whatever system that you're playing on. So part four is going to focus on the flow of a gaming session some of the points to keep in mind, some of the objectives that we're looking to achieve as a building block. Because as you advance the story, as you advance your gaming campaign, each gaming session is going to build one after the other. So there's this duality going on of, in the moment, as a game master and as players and as the system, we're, we're here to have fun. We're here to create. But at the same time, at the end of that gaming session, we want to leave things in such a place that we're ready to catapult to the next gaming session and build and build. This creates momentum. This creates excitement. This creates a story arc that we're going to watch unfold over multiple gaming sessions. So we touched on the previous podcast, Vlog, this idea of preparing for your game. So you're sitting down, you're running the game, You've got your tools out, you've got your dice, if you're using miniatures, handouts, maps, whatever the narrative is going to be. We're playing the game itself, and this could be a set amount of time, maybe like Thursday night at the gaming store, role-playing is there for three hours. So you know you have a three-hour window. Or it could be something on the opposite side, a little bit more relaxed, like, hey, we're getting together Saturday night, and I don't know, we're just going to play. You know, five, six hours, we'll see where things go. Um, we'll end when it feels natural to end. The mechanics of the actual gaming session itself, we're going to put that aside. So that's almost going to be like um, part 4.5 or part 5. But as we're running, because we're looking at the overall flow of the building block, as we're running the adventure, we are keeping track of time on there. We are keeping track of time. I don't want to... I'm, I'm an analog guy, so you know I'm, I'm watching the pocket watch. Uh, I don't want to be glancing at it every 10 minutes because that kills the buzz of the game. But I want to be aware of where the party is, where the players are. So if they are working on an encounter and that encounter runs much longer than I think it thought it would on there because they explored some options, they did some creative things... But what should have taken maybe 20 minutes took an hour, and we only have 40 minutes left or 30 minutes left or 20 minutes left of gaming, if we're up against a hard point on there, then maybe I want to look at what's upcoming and end the adventure a little sooner or insert another part. You're looking for a natural stopping point. You're looking for a place where the, the players can feel like they've achieved something individually they've achieved something as a group they're excited and they're eager for that next step okay and the adventure right there this is challenging this is this is challenging because it's not always easy right uh, a role-playing game is about having the narrative and having the freedom to build so you you really can't lay it down as a blueprint and say well this is going to be 15 minutes this encounter is going to be 10 minutes um, exploring this room is going to be three minutes it, it doesn't work that way but we are trying to be mindful of, if this is a good place to stop, wind it down. But do it without your players knowing. We want to leave them in that, that kind of high point, that kind of really, really good, good point on there. So as it gets to be about an hour towards ending time, that's where I start to think, look, we still have an hour to go. A lot of great stuff to, to build and create and do, but... Let's kind of be open where we're going to stop it. Now, on the opposite end, if you're playing, it's a Saturday night, and you've got hours and hours to play, and you've been playing for hours and hours, this is, on the one hand, a little bit easier, but on the other hand, a little bit more challenging because stop on a high point. You need to um, be connected physically to the players and be aware 
how are we doing? Are we ready to kind of stop for the evening? Are we ready for another encounter? I'm tired in a good way, exhausted in a good way. Um, if I feel the pulse as a DM, I'll wind the adventure down a little early. Or I'll push it for another encounter on there. But either way, fixed time, not fixed time, a good place to stop. So the adventure's over. And uh, this could be like if you have three hours to play and the gaming store closes down at 10 a.m., lights off, get out of here, then I want to stop at like 9.40-ish on there. Because there's a wrap-up to the session. Um, things are much easier to resolve face-to-face, one-to-one, and there's certain aspects of the game, much like character creation, um, you want to be there to offer feedback or answer questions with the players. So when we end an adventure, and and this depends a little bit if it's a fantasy-based adventure or modern sci-fi alternate universe or world, do we have to divide up treasure? Do we have to make decisions of what the party wants to do next, where they want to go next? You know, you uncovered um, the possible three locations of the cult, and now where do you want to go? You know, which, do you want to go to the rune stones? Do you want to go to the abandoned castle? Do you want to go off into the woods on there? What decisions need to be made so this way as a group, when we sit down for the next adventure, we're ready to go? Is there any bookkeeping? I, I call this witness bookkeeping on there. So when your character levels up, and, and of course, th- again, this is dependent on the system. I'm, I'm specifically trying to stay system independent for these Game Master podcasts. But once you reach an experience level threshold, you're going to gain some abilities. You're going to get some stuff. Um, you can pick those things outside of the game for the next gaming session. But are there elements that we need to witness, such as rolling for hit points? If we're looking at Dungeons & Dragons, you got to roll for those hit points on the table, and you, you get what you get on there. If you're a barbarian rolling a D12 and you roll a 1, there's going to be a lot of crying on there. If you're a wizard, D4, you roll a 1, you're like, eh, big deal on there. If you're a barbarian, you roll a 12, the gods have, have favored you on there. But certain roles or certain decisions where a player needs to make a choice for the group and for the game master, let's, let's resolve that bookkeeping on here. I don't want that bookkeeping to drag on for hours and hours. We just need to make, we need to break out the decisions that the group needs to make in front of the game master, in front of themselves, and uh, the intercession stuff like, well, you can pick five feats. And of those five feats, you know, you have a list of 50. Oh, okay, you know, during the week I'll think about it, maybe I'll, I'll crunch some numbers, I'll see where I want to go. Or your sh- share of the treasure is, you know, 8 million credits on there, Battletech Universe. Well, actually, Battletech Universe, that's a lot too. Um, but 8 million credits, whatever that means. Maybe it's Star Frontiers. And now you can buy some equipment. You can upgrade your house, your base, whatever you want to do. That's stuff that you can enjoy as a player during the week. I don't need to be there um, table. But that wrap-up, end-of-the-gaming session is what we want to approach. And then we'll see you next week.